Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play System Shock 2. Last time we had finished up our training in the tutorial sections and had just started up the main game, having, having woken up from a cryo sleep with amnesia. We've been contacted by Dr. Janice Polito of the Computer Ops staff, and she has asked us to come and meet her on Deck 4. Something happened, however. The, uh... A dish outside a window was emitting some strange readings, and then there was an explosion and the computer started warning of an imminent decompression event. That should catch us up to where we left off. There's a corpse. He has a very solid wrench. The wrench is what we're going to be using on the vast majority of enemies in this game. Let's look at it. A multi-purpose tool generally used for engineering purposes, however it makes an effective makeshift weapon. When you hit someone over the head with 22 pounds of steel, they tend not to appreciate it. Taz Amanpour VB Maintenance Crew. The wrench does not require any weapon skill to use. That would be why we use it. So we can break this fallen duct and climb the ladder. The entire sector is depressurizing and the blue vacuum shield won't last long. Get through a secure airlock before you're sucked into space. Move it! We don't actually have a time limit. I like to see what the emails are called as we get them. That was... Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding sector depressurizing. Ah. Button. Information. A trioptimum information terminal. A service of the Trioptimum Corporation presented for your convenience. Information, the cyber interface. Many of your actions are now cyber enhanced. Your cyber interface supports two modes. Shoot, a minimal mode, and use, a more complex mode. Shoot mode provides crosshairs in the center of the screen. Fire your current weapon at the crosshairs by left clicking. Right clicking a nearby object under your cursor will interact with that object. If it is a button or a machine, you will use it. If it is something that you can pick up, it will go into your inventory. You may enter Use Mode by hitting the Tab key. When you are in Use Mode, you will see an arrow cursor which you may move about. You can move objects around in your inventory by left click and dragging them. You can use most objects in your inventory by moving the cursor over them and right clicking. To get back into Shoot Mode, simply hit the Tab key again or left click in the main world view. Needed. Cryogenic sector access required. Cryogenic sector access card. Hack skill of one required, so we can't hack it. Here's another information terminal. The PDA. Your PDA contains every email, log, and info kiosk note you find on board. It also contains an automatic note-taking utility, which keeps you informed of pressing tasks while on board. You can access the PDA by left-clicking on the log icon on the right info bar. Uh, we got a new objective, get through a secure airlock. Let's search the corpse. An audio log, Amanpour, July 7th, 2114. Great. I've got to change the access codes out of Cryo-A again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Grassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. Regarding new code. Alright. 45100. There's that 451 that's in every game. First showed up in System Shock. Warning. Decompression. 
decompression event imminent. Please move immediately to cryo recovery B. Decompression event imminent. Out here, we find another wrench, which we will pick up. A recharging station. This power cell is dead. There should be a recharger nearby. Just use it and it will recharge all the power-driven devices in your possession. After you've recharged the cell, plug it into the auxiliary power unit. That should open the airlock door. Be quick about it. The vacuum seals airlock won't hold up much locked. longer. Auxiliary power override failure. Please replace power cell. That was Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding dead power cell. Let's pick it up. Let's look at it. The Electrosim Type 5 power cell is a new model designed to deliver a lot of power over a small period of time. These are typically used to provide emergency backup power for ship critical systems. Unfortunately, they have a tendency to lose their charge if stored for more than a few weeks, so they must be frequently recharged at energy recharging stations. Electrosim has replaced this unit with the more stable 5A, but the upgrade was not available before the Von Braun left Earth. All items in inventory recharged. A charged power cell. Doesn't change anything. We have to plug it in here. And... Good. You've managed to get out before the whole area depressurized. I've just uploaded you some cybernetic modules. You can use them to upgrade your cybernetic rig at the upgrade units in this area. There are four types of units in the next room. One for each subsystem of your cybernetic gear. Stats, psi, weapons, and tech. But use the modules carefully. They're hard to come by. All right, we have four cyber modules. That email was Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding upgrade units. We've successfully gotten through a secure airlock. Anything else? No, not yet. So this is a light switch. We'll search this crate. Has 20 nanites in it. Hooray. An information kiosk. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at my map. So we've gotten out of cryo recovery A. We are now in the cryo retraining facility. We're on the lower level inset here. I have to admit, I don't know what 1 and 2 actually are, but that's okay. Oh, they show me the passages between areas 2 and 2. Okay, okay. Alright. Maps. To access maps for a section of a level, enter Use Mode and click on the Map button. The map will display rooms that you have already been to and will highlight the room that you are in. If you have the Spatially Aware OS upgrade, the map will also display the areas you have not yet been to. Your position on the map is indicated by a red pointer. Many useful common items, such as replicators and upgrade units, are marked on the map, with a key to the icons on the lower left. You can place navigation markers on the map by hitting the N key. This will mark your current position with a small triangle. This marker, or any other, may be selected when you have the full map displayed. While selected, any text you type will get annotated to that marker. If you click the mini-map button on the main map display, a small portion of the map will be displayed in the upper right-hand corner of your screen while you are in move mode. <clears throat> Alright, there's another information terminal over here. The MFD. The MFD button on your lower right display contains information about your character. It has four major areas, one for each of the categories of character growth. Stats, Tech, Combat, and Psi. 
With the exception of the size screen, these screens are informational only and let you know your current skills and abilities. The stats screen also, sh also shows your current OS upgrades, and the tech screen displays your installed software. The Psi area is a bit more complicated. It has five tabs, each representing a different tier of Psi disciplines. You may click on any Psi discipline that you currently know in order to select that discipline. The next time you use the Psi amp, that discipline will activate. Got ten nanites right there and another information kiosk. Left Info Tab. The lower left info tab includes a count of how many cybernetic modules and nanites you have, a button to call up your maps, map, a button to call up reports on anything you've researched, a test tube icon, and a query button, question mark, which will give you an expanded help text on items in your inventory. Left click on any of these buttons to access the function. Pretty straightforward. Let's keep going. Here's another corpse. He's got four more cyber modules on him. So we have eight now. That's back into that other room. Here is our first set of upgrade units. We have one for stats. Cybernetic upgrade unit for basic abilities. I currently have eight modules, and as you can see, I can upgrade my strength from two to three for 14, which is useless, so I won't be doing that. I could upgrade endurance from one to two at a cost of five modules. That I might end up doing, we'll see. Um, I can increase my psi from three to four at a cost of 26 modules. That's worth doing, but obviously I don't have the modules yet. I can increase agility from 2 to 3 at a cost of 14 modules. Again, possibly worth doing. I can increase my cyber, cyber affinity from 2 to 3 at a cost of 14. Again, that I won't be doing. Here's the Psi upgrade unit. Cybernetic upgrade unit for psionic projection. I already have a lot of these. New tier 1 powers cost 5 modules to get, but I think I already have everything I want. Let's see. I don't need Psycho Reflective Screen. I don't need Neuro Reflex Dampening. I've got Kinetic Redirection. I've got Psychogenic Agility. I don't really need Psychogenic Cyber Affinity, and I don't need Remote Electron Tampering. I've got Projected Cryokinesis. So let's look at tier 2. Each of these powers cost eight modules. I don't need anti-entropic field. Adrenaline overproduction is a good one to have. Don't need neural decontamination. Cerebro-stimulated regeneration is good. Um, psychogenic strength, no thanks. Localized pyrokinesis, no. Recursive psionic amplification, no. Tier 3, unlocking it, costs 53 modules, and then each of the Tier 3 powers costs 14. Tier 4 costs 89 modules, and each of the powers takes 21. Tier 5 costs 134 modules, and each of the powers cost 35. Weapons. I won't be spending anything here, but to take standard energy or heavy from 0 to 1 would cost 21 modules. And tech. Taking any of my technical skills from 0 to 1 would cost 17 modules. And at the moment, I only have 8. So should I spend them now, or should I save them? Oh, 
I think for now, I'll spend five and take endurance from one to two. Yeah, now I have three modules, which is insufficient to afford anything. But that one point in endurance raised my HP to 13. So there we have a stuck door. In here, we've got a searchable crate, five nanites, awesome. And an audio log, Grassy, July 7th, 2114. Hey Doc, a security bot showed up with orders from you to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? Regarding implant job to Dr. Janice Polito. And here's another information kiosk. Software. Software helps you to perform the various technical tasks such as hacking, repairing, and modifying. Higher levels of software provide greater bonuses to these operations, both increasing your chance of success on any given node and decreasing the number of dangerous nodes. The exact details on any given task will be indicated in the MFD when you attempt to perform it. Here's another corpse. He's got a med hypo. Here's another information kiosk. Computer hacking. There are numerous devices to hack on board, security systems, replicators, keypads, and more. Each hack attempt costs a specified number of nanites. To try to override one of these systems, simply click on the hack button in the item's MFD. This will bring up a hacking screen which will detail information about your chances and allow you an opportunity to back out before spending the nanites and attempting to break through the system's security. Your chance for failing to modify any given square cannot be lowered below 15%. The hacking interface itself will display a grid of squares and require you to light up three squares in a row. Red squares have dangerous ice on them while cyan squares are safe to hack. If you are unsuccessful at modifying a cyan square, it is darkened. If you are unsuccessful at modifying a red square, you have critically failed the attempt. Critical failure can cause a wide range of bad effects, from breakage to activation of security alerts. Anyway, this door is locked. I ha do not know the code, and it requires a hack skill of one. So we'll just keep on moving. I think I'll go in order from cheapest to most expensive, so... The cheapest upgrades I do want now cost eight modules a pop. The tier two powers. So I'll come back when I have at least eight modules. Oh, I think we're in a new area now. Let's look at the map. Yes, we are now in Cryo Recovery B. First things first. Can somebody let me out? I can't find my card. Please, let me out of here. Here's a container of nanites. 20 of them. I have 55 now. Access needed. Science sector access required. That's another light switch. Let's look at this information kiosk. Inventory. To see your inventory, hit the tab key. You may only carry a limited number of items as visually indicated by the number of squares in your inventory. The stronger you are, the more inventory you may carry. You may move items around freely in your inventory and may equip them by dragging them to the weapon armor implant section on the right, and you may drop them by dragging them into the 3D view. To drag an item, click and hold with the left mouse button. All right, pretty good. Let's check out these upper rooms. Obviously, we're looking for a science sector access card now. This guy has a Psy Amp. There's another information kiosk. Psy Disciplines. There are five tiers of Psy Disciplines. You can learn more psionic disciplines by enhancing your Psy skills at an upgrade unit. 
To use a Psy Discipline, equip your Psy Amp, tilde key, then select a Discipline in the Psy MFD or in the Ammo window on the bottom right of the screen. Press the left mouse button to fire the selected Psy Discipline. Finally out here, as you can see over there, there's a Strength Booster and some standard bullets, which I do want to get. Ah, quick save. <coughs> that was astounding. Problem is, I don't know if he can make this jump. <coughs> He's acting like he can't. And even that little bit of fall damage is gonna hurt him, so... Let's instead see if we can't manage to grab them from down here. I don't care if it's a glitch. Six standard bullets and a speed booster. We haven't seen a speed booster yet, so let's look at it. The Vita Hib, the Vita Hib, I don't know how you, H-Y-B. The Vita Hib speed boost hypo confers 20 seconds of double speed. Popular among high school students for a dangerous street sport of crash careening, the speed boost hypo can also be invaluable in emergencies. Alright, back upstairs. Let's turn left. Another information kiosk. Equipping weapons. You may equip weapons in one of two ways. First, you may drag a weapon to your weapon equip slot near the upper right part of your inventory. Second, you may use the top row of number keys on your keyboard. Each weapon type is mapped to a specific key from tilde to equals and including the slash key, regardless of whether it's on the top row or not. Repeated presses of a number key cycle through numerous copies of a single weapon type. Armor and implants may only be equipped by dragging the item into the appropriate slot on the upper right of the inventory. Fair enough. There's a science sector access card. The corpse has 20 nanites on it. Here we can break this glass, take a Psy Hypo, and a box of six rifled slugs. The design of the basic shotgun slug hasn't changed much in the past century. A small, heavy piece of metal delivered with a high kinetic energy is a short, simple recipe for damage. Now that we have the Science Sector Access card, I'm gonna save right quick. Quick save too, and we can head on through. Well done. I'm uploading some more modules. Four cyber modules. The many are strong. That brings me up to seven, which doesn't earn me any new upgrades. One hybrid has five nanites on it. The other has an unresearched object. This item requires a research skill of one to be researched. Well, all right. Techno Jam, just like System Shock. Well, here's the elevator. Access to decks one through five. That insipid computer Xerxes has shut down the elevator as well. You can transfer power at the engine core on deck one, which will get the elevator up and running again. But you can't use the elevator to get down there. Wait. There's some kind of maintenance access right on this hallway. You can use it to reach deck one. However, it's locked, and Xerxes is hiding the passcode from me. Dr. Watts should have the code. He's probably in the crew subsection. Grassi has the key to get in there, but he's in the medical subsection, probably near the biopsy lab. Now get to the medical subsection and find Grassi. All right. So first, the email. Polito, July 12th, 2114, 
regarding fixing the elevators. The new note is, get a crew card from Grassi. He's near biopsy and medical. Get the maintenance access shaft code from Dr. Watts and then get to deck four to meet Dr. Polito. So we don't have the code and we can't hack it. You know what? That music's killing me. I need to turn it down. That's so much better. Okay. Security control station. We could hack it, but the security system is active. No threats are detected. Hack skill one required. Here's an electronic security crate. Access denied. Hack skill two required. Well, all right. Let's just uh, open this back door then. A bottle of liquor. Oh, yeah, this item is not yet researched. That's all it says. The bottle of liquor. With advances in pharmaceuticals that mimic the effects of alcohol, liquor has begun to be rated in both true proof and factor proof with the strongest drinks being close to 330 factor proof. This rot gut gets you drunk the old fashioned way with no added factor proof. On the ground is a bag of chips. And inside the desk, there's an audio log. Delacroix, April 4th, 2114. Regarding Xerxes. Why is it that no one listens to me? The security protocols on the Xerxes system are clearly immature. Some idiot hacked into the primary data loop last night and made Xerxes sing Elvis Presley songs for three hours. I finally had to pull the voice subsystem offline. What would happen if someone with a real agenda got into him? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, since we we won't get a recycler until we get to deck four, and we'll run out of inventory space quickly, so all the things that we're not using, like all the stuff that we're just carrying around, like ammo, chips, liquor, extra wrench, extra psyamp, ammo, I'm just gonna leave here by the elevator. Everything I might actually use, I'm gonna keep on me. Now let's keep heading down this hallway first. This head this is the door to the medical subsector. I almost forgot. Oh no, that was a security terminal. But here is another information kiosk. I hear an enemy, so I'd better be careful, but... Xerxes and security. The onboard security system is controlled by Xerxes, the ship's computer. If a security camera spots you, it will sound the alarm and security forces will rush to find you. A camera that has not yet spotted you will display a green light. As it becomes alert to your presence, the light will change from green to yellow and then to red. You should make sure to either destroy security cameras before they turn red, or or hack into security computers to temporarily disable them. If the alarm does go off, you can terminate it by using a security computer. Well, that's all good to know. Let's head down here toward medical. Although actually, this room looks contained, so we'll go in here. Is there another? The many <laughs> There's active respawn everywhere at all levels. We can't uh, clear them. Hybrid's got nothing. Corpse is nothing. On most decks, you'll find a quantum bio reconstruction device. Xerxes shut them all down, but I've discreetly put them back online. You'll need to interface with each machine locally to provide a quantum entanglement sample. 
Once you do that, the device will be able to rebuild your body essentially from scratch. It's not pleasant, but it's preferable to slow decomposition. That email was called, well, from Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding bio-reconstruction. So, we'll turn it on. Sample acquired quantum bio-reconstruction machine now active. This is basically a resurrection unit like in System Shock 1. The big difference is that resurrecting costs 5 nanites. If you run out of nanites, you cannot resurrect. Further, we really need every nanite we can get on Impossible. We're going to ultimately spend just about all of them on Psy Hypos because our OSA build demands it. That means that I'm really not going to let myself get killed and resurrect like I did in System Shock because there is a cost associated with it and it's a cost I can't afford on Impossible. But it's nice to have the machine online anyway. The body bag has a Psy Hypo in it. That body bag is empty. There's a log on the floor. Grassi, June 20th, 2114. Regarding all work, no play. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau City. Karenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watts, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, la -dee da Alright, let's head up the ladder. That body bag's got a med hypo in it. Alright, now we can head towards med. There's a security camera. has also taken out access to this bulkhead. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find a recharger. The one you used before is in hard vacuum now, I'm afraid, but there should be another one on this deck. Once you get the battery recharged, place it in the auxiliary override. All right, that email was Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding powering the door. That's fine. Destroy the camera with our trusty wrench. Can't get into the door until we put the power back online. The corpse has an MFD game player and a game cartridge, Swine Keeper. Let's see what both of those are. A shiny new game pig trademark entertainment device from Vortex Mechanics Unlimited. Able to play dozens of different games simply by inserting new memory cartridges. <coughs> Most games star Grunty the Gaming Pig, who first rose to fame in the 2005 interactive entertainment Corporate Swine. Disclaimer. VMU is not liable for any accidents which may occur due to distraction from playing Game Pig trademark games in a heads-up display. Oink! And the cartridge. This memory module contains a complete working game for use with your VMU Game Pig trademark. Oink! So we use the cartridge and our Game Pig can now play Swine Keeper. Corn attracts swine. Don't step on corn. Flag the corn. It's basically Minesweeper. You've stepped on the corn. Game over. We can also hack our game pig, but it requires a hack skill of six. Anyway, let's pick up the dead power cell. And let's look at the information terminal. Energy rechargers. Using a recharger provides complete replenishment to all your power-driven devices, including implants, energy weapons, and other items you might find in the world, such as auxiliary power units. The maintenance skill allows you to recharge items beyond their normal capacity. One other thing, uh, 
I think this is the first place I really saw any, but junk, potted plant. This is the kind of thing we need to hoard to recycle. This hardy specimen has been genetically tailored to require minimal water, even less light, and almost no minerals or fertilizer. It bears a striking resemblance in both color and lifelessness to the plastic plants of several decades past. Let's win a game of Swine Keeper, just cause. You found all the corn. You win. Yahoo. All right. There's an audio log. An audio log. Curtis, July 6th, 2114. Regarding coolant leaks. Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. That was to Dr. Marie Delacroix. Anyway, we've got an anti-radiation hypo here. If we query that. This agent radically accelerates the half-life breakdown of many potentially hazardous compounds. Dr. Marie Delacroix, the chief engineer aboard the Von Braun, was well aware of the imperfections inherent in the rush to development of the ship. Notably, the coolant system of the ship had a chronic cracking problem, leading to the widespread leakage of hazardous materials. While these leaks are easily detected and usually quickly fixed, she demanded that an excess supply of ChemCal rad hypos be distributed throughout the ship. Unlike most of her cautions regarding conditions on the Von Braun, this one was actually heated. Most effective if used shortly after the hazardous event, anti-radiation hypos inject small amounts of an agent commercial commercially inject small amounts of an agent commercially known as neutralizer. Anyway, if we hop up here, we can get a second rad hypo. And we can head off in search of another recharging station. Let me look around and make sure there was no junk I missed picking up anywhere. I don't think so. All right, let's head, let's head through this door now. Remember Citadel. This is Xerxes. Please report any unauthorized database interactions to your direct superior. Remember, a smooth operation is everybody's responsibility. Alright, that corpse has nothing on it. Here's our first replicator. God damn. Somebody's hacked into this thing again. I'm gonna tell Delacroix. Alright. Hey there. Please make your selection. Hack skill 3 required to hack the replicator. This one sells a bag of chips, 12 standard bullets, 6 standard bullets, at 120 and at 200, and a med hypo for 60. Don't need any of that. It's good to know it's there. This corpse has nothing. Here's another information kiosk. Basic ammo use. When you have a weapon equipped, you will see the weapon itself held in front of you, and if the weapon uses ammunition, the type of ammunition, the setting, and the condition of the weapon will be shown in the lower right small window. A good condition weapon will have a green dot. After the weapon condition degrades, the dot will turn yellow and then red. To attack with the weapon, left click using the crosshair to aim. Most ammunition comes in clips containing multiple bullets. To reload with the same ammo, hit R and hit B in order to switch ammo. If you are in use mode, the ammo window will be expanded and there will be buttons to toggle the weapon setting, to reload the weapon with the same ammo, and a green arrow to reload with a different type of ammunition. Let's move on. A bottle of very strong vodka. A distilled liquor, vodka is something that the replicators never really got quite right. 
The replicated brand is numbingly strong, but one's enjoyment is hindered by a sharp, biting taste. And here's another audio log. Curtis, July 7th, 2114. Regarding more trouble. I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shafts shorted out the primary access channel. And that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? There's a camera over here. Xerxes has control of the ship's security system. Avoid or destroy any security cameras you see. You can hack security computers to power down the cameras too, if you're good enough. But don't botch the job or you'll set off the alarm yourself. Your corpse is useless to me. All right, well, let's destroy this one. Nice and easy. Now over here, We've got a door to the crew quarters. Access needed. Deck two crew access required. Now if I remember right. Yes. We've got a turret. Well, not only do we have a turret down there, but it can hit us. Down here, we've got six armor-piercing bullets. It's the armor-piercing round is not particularly effective against soft targets, but it's the round of choice when up against mechanized foes. The uranium tips provide considerable penetrating power, even to relatively weak slug throwers like the Talon M2A3 and the M22 assault rifle. The bullet is the kid brother of the discarding Sabo rounds used by tanks in the 21st century. Besides the incredibly dense uranium tip, the casing is lined with an advanced ballistic material that decreases drag, imparting even greater penetration. The crate is empty. The corpse has nothing. The turret is tracking me behind all this. Hmm. I'm not quite sure if or how I should do this. Let me pull up the map and see if there's a good way to get behind it. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe if I can just run to it real fast. See that? I can actually get close to it. All I need now is a good plan to finish it off. Probably a shot of cryokinesis. Come on. There you go. Almost. Too much. Burnout. There we go. That is the type of execution we need. Unbreakable window. A box of six standard bullets. Now we can get those armor piercers at will. And I need to work out a way 
to get those too. <clears throat> Probably have to use the side pull, which is fine. Too much. What we got there, we got another box of armor piercing bullets, and we got a strength booster. The strength boost pharmaceutical confers one point of strength up to a maximum of eight points for five minutes. Vitahybe, the makers of strength boost, have been rumored to sell surgically implant implantable strength boost drip packages for athletes, though such things are, of course, highly illegal. It looks like we're all done with this section. Let's move back here and drop our unnecessaries here at the elevator. Actually, I think I'll keep the strength booster with me, but everything else is junk. Let's deal with the deal with that camera as soon as we can. Getting directly under them is a good move. We'll wrench it down, but let's go this way first. Actually, let me look at the map. Okay, no, no, let's go this way first, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Pipe hybrid. Come on. Silence the discord. Got him. He had a med hypo. Actually useful. Awesome. Okay. There's another one. Alright, we killed him. In here, there's a potted plant. The desk is empty. And there's another information kiosk. Research. At various places on board, you might find items described as unresearched object. By either right-clicking on this object in your inventory or dragging it into the research MFD, you may research the item. Research takes time to accomplish and sometimes requires you to locate various chemical elements. Right-click on the chemical or drag it into your research MFD to feed it into the research device. You may quickly open the research MFD by left-clicking on the test tube icon on the bottom left of the screen while in the use mode. When research is completed or requires a chemical, your cyber interface will notify you. Oh, the fucking monkeys. Alright, good, he doesn't have anything. This desk has three anti-toxin hypos. Let's query those. The Vitahybe detoxification hypo spray acts fast and it acts strong to rid your body of chemical and environmental hazards. Had too much to drink? Wandered too close to a synthocrete building in progress? Try a dose. 
Children, senior citizens, pregnant women, and those on any form of medication are warned to consult Health Advisory 1053-T032 before using Vitahive Sky Banner 2110. Can turn the lights back on. This desk has an audio log. Grassi, June 26th, 2114. Regarding animal rights? Ever since we reached Tau Ceti, the lab monkeys have been acting strangely. Nurse Lesser picked one out of a cage to be brought in for vivisection, and the rest of them, I mean the entire group, stood up on their legs and howled. This wasn't just a random display. It was a protest. I forgot, uh, Polito's last email, well, Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding the security system. Recharge the power cell and use it to open the door to medical. Back here, there's a corpse. It's empty. Here's a security crate. Tax skill 2 required. And here's an information terminal. Security crates. Some crates are specifically designed to hold dangerous, expensive, and or sensitive materials. These crates are protected by a sophisticated security system, which must be hacked which must be hacked past to get at the goods inside. Critical failure causes a thermoplastic charge inside the crate to explode, causing significant damage to all nearby. Alright, nothing back here, but we can see a recharger underneath us. Let's head back out into the hallway. That's where we were earlier, in the sector that's now depressurized. Dead Woman has a version 1 research software. Version 1 research software equipped. Oh, well let's go take a look at what that looks like. It, oh, I just... the number 1 just shows up. That's literally all there is. That's fine. Let's head through here. The body bag has a med hypo in it. This room's got a med hypo over under that duct. That corpse has nothing on it. Research and development. Access needed. Requires an access card. Here's another replicator. Hi there. Please make your selection. Hack skill three required. Bag of chips for six. Hi there. Please make your selection. Six standard bullets for 120. Psy hypo for 150. Anti-toxin hypo for 70. See another hybrid down there. We can, we can, we can take him. Or he can kill himself. In awesome fashion by whacking the explosive barrels. He's got nothing. Just a security crate. Hack skill 2 required. The trash can has 20 nanites in it. That's handy. Alright, we've exhausted all exploration options except for... Hey. That one had a shotgun. Got one shell, and it's broken. Terrible. Condition one. Let's look at it anyway. The shotgun requires a standard weapon skill of three in order to use. Both modifications to the shotgun increase damage. The first also reduces reload time, while the second reduces kickback. Shotguns in the military had generally gone out of favor until Triop Consumer Division introduced a handheld version of this 10-gauge monster. 
While it works like a traditional, albeit incredibly deadly, shotgun, this magazine-loaded behemoth also supports a triple-load shot, which has been known to split its victims in two. A few months after its introduction, its popularity with hunters and other weapons enthusiasts prompted a large-scale purchase of the guns by the UNN military. That's fine. We'll leave it and the potted plant here at the elevator for later recycling. Chemical storeroom. Ouch. Let's do a slightly better, well. A try-up information terminal. Querying items. Most inventory items may be queried by first clicking on the question mark icon on the bottom left of the screen while in use mode, and then clicking on the object in question. This will bring up an MFD that gives detailed information on that object. You may also query objects while in use mode by holding down the control key and left clicking. Oh no, well that, that is useful knowledge. Each deck has a chemical storeroom where you can find the resources you need to research the artifacts you'll find around the ship. Don't try to carry around all the chemicals at once. It's impractical and unnecessary. Your research software will tell you what chemicals it needs and when. All right. That's Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding chemical stores. So we've got antimony. Well, here. I'll just show you this. A chemical manifest log. I hear someone out there. Chemical manifest, medsci. Laboratory stockroom, inventory, medsci, stockroom 143. Hurry, there he is. Run. He's got nothing. Oops. Ever since we reached Tau Ceti, the lab monkeys have been. We've got antimony two, barium one, californium two, fermium two, gallium one, iridium two, osmium one, technetium one, tellurium two, yttrium two. This inventory list is required by UNN safety code number 134882 to be kept on hand in all areas of hazardous chemical storage. Storage is defined by UNN safety code number 195331 to consist of all areas in which hazardous chemicals, see safety code number 093355, are stored in quantities greater than 50 grams per 10 square feet for durations of greater than 24 hours. Anyway, the corpse has a pistol, average condition, five. We can unload it, which is a good decision. It's got seven standard bullets, and anyway, now you can also see the modify interface, but modify skill one required. That crate's got a box of 12 standard bullets. That one's got nothing. That's all fine. Let's head back out to the elevator right quick, just so I can demo something real fast. If I pick everything back up. My broken shotgun seems to have disappeared. Well, that's not cool. Seriously, what happened to the broken shotgun? Oh well. Well, I was just gonna demonstrate that if you right click on the shotgun, then uh, you'll have an orange repair button that opens up a grid of nodes just like the hacking and modifying interfaces. Anyway, a lot of this is currently useless to me, but I'll use it eventually, so I guess I'll hold on to it. 
Anyway, let's keep going down this hallway. him good he had five nanites hey useful all right that corpse has six armor piercing bullets on it and here is another information kiosk advanced ammo use there are numerous types of ammo for most weapons for example the assault rifle can use standard armor piercing and anti-personnel rounds each type of ammo is more effective against some types of enemies and less effective against others for instance, firing anti-personnel rounds against an armored or metallic target is not going to cause much damage, but armor-piercing ammo can stop him in his tracks. Alright, let's stay on the top level for now. Seeing that there's really nothing up here, we'll just hop over here, get this Psy Hypo off of the crates. Hop down to ground level where there's a bottle of vodka. There's the ladder we could have come down earlier. And I'm wary of this spot. Because if I remember right, those doors open. This is Xerxes. Remember, the unauthorized usage of firearms aboard the Von Kron is a class 3 infraction. Yeah, okay. This is Xerxes. Remember, the unauthorized usage of firearms aboard the Von Kron is a class 3 infraction. Alright, well this corpse has two cyber modules and a med hypo. On the ground here, there are ten nanites. There's the recharger I needed. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to handle these turrets. I'm hopeful... that uh, maybe I can blow up the explosive barrels. Well, I can, but that did nothing to the turret, so that didn't really help me. really like is to so with the turret you can hack it if your hack skill is at four or higher again obviously that doesn't really help me but damn it maybe I can just get past him if there's a way to do this or not. Well, I think I can just run past him. For what that's worth. Should 
sure seems like the most viable option. There we go. Xerxes can eat a dick. Now with those extra two modules that I found on that body, I think I can afford... Oh, crap. I'll tell you one thing I can't afford is stupid, wasteful mistakes like that. Anyway, let me see now the... Eights are the tier two psi powers. So let me think about what I want. I don't need anti entropic field, but let's get adrenaline overproduction. That'll be a good one to have. It'll boost my wrench power. Before I leave, I would like to experiment a little more in trying to attack these turrets. Nah, let's not. There's nothing in their alcoves, I'm just thinking of the off chance that they might drop something, but it's so minuscule, it's not worth the hassle. Do I have any junk to leave at the elevator? Yes. Let's drop off another bottle of vodka and the armor-piercing bullets. And let's install the power cell. You have not disappointed me. Transmitting cybernetic modules. All right, she gave us four new modules, which boosts our total to a whopping five. And here's a bulkhead door, which changes the map. So let's head on through. We've arrived in the medical subsection, which, as you can see, is an entirely different map. And you know what? I've been playing long enough that I think I'm going to call it a video. I think I'll have to go by map changes instead of deck changes, which is fine. So, this has been Let's Play System Shock 2. Next time, we will search the medical sector for a for Grassi because he has a key card to get into the crew sector, which is where Dr. Watts is, who has the code to get into the maintenance shaft to go down to the engineering deck, where we can power on the elevators in order to go to deck four and meet with Dr. Polito. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff, but we have successfully recharged the power cell and used it to open the door to medical. So we're back to get a crew card from Grassi. He's near biopsy and medical. Then, of course, get the maintenance shaft access get the maintenance access shaft code from Dr. Watts, get to deck four to meet Dr. Polito. So, that's where we find ourselves. Make a new quick save as well, and I will call it a video. Until next time, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.